is an essential component of miniaturization, the microchip. Microchips are basically tiny silicon wafers with circuits etched onto them. The surface has to be perfectly flat to ensure reliable connections. At Yamashito Denso Corporation, Mr. Masaki Yamashito, the chairman, introduced me to a surprising modern application of an ancient technique. This machine, called Magic Mirror, checks polished silicon wafers for any imperfections. Here's how it works. Light rays hitting a flat surface bounce off at the same angle. Any deviation in the surface causes them to bounce off in different angles. These imperfections are so slight, you can't see them with the naked eye. It looks good. Using this reflective principle, the machine can detect surface imperfections down to two to three nanometers, that is, two to three billionths of a meter. They're shown as dark areas wherever the surface isn't flat. For the wafer to be used for chips, the image must be completely white, that is, free of any deviations, like this one. Magic mirror, or Makio technology, has become a world standard. But why is it called magic mirror? Once again, the answer lies in the past. An ancient technology imported from China, the magic mirror had a revival in mid-16th century Japan. At this time, Christianity was considered a foreign influence and an obstacle to establishing absolute control over the people. To be Christian was illegal. Showing your faith in public could cost you your head. However, during this dark period, the magic mirror saved lives. The magic began with a copper plate that was cast and polished under a master's hand. The real magic of the mirror is its precision. The image is carved on the reflecting surface so subtly that if you look at yourself in the mirror, all you see is yourself. But if the mirror reflects white light, it tells a different story. Thanks to the magic mirror, Christians could secretly identify themselves to those who shared their faith. The light reflecting principle of the wafer analyzer goes back centuries to this ancient technology. To find out how the image got inside the mirror, I visited a traditional workshop in Kyoto. The Yamamoto family has been making magic mirrors for nearly 200 years. They follow an ancient process with a few modern touches. Copper is melted at about 1300 degrees centigrade in this small gas furnace. While it's a secret family recipe, some say that the best mirrors are made of 5 parts lead, 15 parts tin and 80 parts copper. A little burnt straw filters out any surface impurities as it is poured into the mould. It looks simple enough, so I thought I'd give it a try. OK, this makes me a little bit nervous. Oh, it is unbelievably hot. Oh, hotter than a thousand barbecues. And now the trick is to pour it without spilling it and burning my feet off. I feel like I'm burning my face off. And there we go. Let's see if that one comes out magic. Somehow I don't think so. Two hours later, the mold has cooled and the cast is broken out. The copper plate is blank on one side. Today, the other side displays a Buddha. However, during the persecution, a false back concealed the Christian image. Then, the magical process of finishing begins. Mr. Yamamoto is the fifth generation in a family of magic mirror makers. He's been studying the craft here in his father's workshop for eight years but he still has another two years to go before he can call himself a master. That's how long it takes to learn the touch. Scraping and polishing creates microscopic surface variations on the front that produce a reflected image similar to the one on the back. 
takes weeks and a progression of ever finer scrapers to create the image on the mirror surface. Mr. Yamamoto uses a piece of charcoal like this for the final stage in the polishing process. He can't actually see when he's got it right, he has to feel it. The entire process takes about three months, start to finish, even for the most skilled craftsmen. Only an experienced touch will eventually reveal the magical image. Once the mirror has been polished, it's coated with a thin film of nickel, at which point it looks exactly like an ordinary mirror. For the final stage in the process, it's taken outside to check that the image on the back reflects through the front. If the light is right, it does. The ancients' quest for essence 